nobody wants to take a cold shower. Cold showers are not fun. Listening to a podcast. This is a pretty good one. I would recommend this one. Don't have caffeine for an hour after waking up. Now, some of you guys are like, holy crap, I don't know if I could do that. Today, we're going to talk about how to build the perfect morning routine for you. Because there's a lot of books and videos out there that you could watch that could tell you exactly how to build the quote unquote perfect morning routine. But the perfect morning routine is what will work best for you. And so that's what we are going to talk about today. Uh, One of the biggest things that I find that make it easiest to create a great morning routine, no matter who you are, is this. Number one, you have to plan ahead. You have to think about what's going to happen the next day and what you need the next day the night before. And what I always say is how can I make it easier on myself with everything that I do, whether it's work, whether it's traveling, whatever it is, even morning routines, how can I make this easier on myself? And also, how can I be excited about it? Because let's be real, when you're inside of your warm bed and your alarm clock goes off, the last thing that you wanna do is get up and go do something. You'd rather stay inside of your bed. But if you have a morning routine that you've designed that excites you, you're much more likely to get out of bed. And that brings us to the next point that's very important as well, is put your alarm clock on the other side of the room or preferably in another room. It could be in your closet, it could be in your bathroom. Put it somewhere where you have to physically get up and go turn it off. And what I recommend is don't even use your phone because I recommend staying away from your phone as long as you possibly can. Go buy on Amazon or whatever it is you need to do, a $10, a $20 alarm clock, and use that as the alarm that wakes you up so that therefore you don't see all the text messages you missed, the emails you missed, the Facebook messages, the notifications, all of those things, the first thing in the morning as soon as you turn off your alarm. So what I would say is make sure that you buy an alarm clock and put that alarm clock in the other room. And then, as I said, stay away from your phone as long as you possibly can. If you've been following this podcast for a while, you know I always recommend in the mornings, stay away from your phone as long as you possibly can. Because I always say there's Rob before the phone, there's Rob after the phone. And I find that my creative mind and my mind that wants to learn and grow and read and meditate is much more prone to be able to do those things in the morning before I look at the phone. When I look at my phone and I think about all the business and the stuff that has to be done and videos that need to be made and people that need to be talked to, my brain goes away from wanting to meditate and wanting to journal and wanting to read and do all of those things. So I recommend before you dive in to your actual morning routine, look at your phone don't look at your phone, but keep it as long as possible before you look at your phone. It could be 30 minutes, it could be 45, an hour, two hours, however long your morning routine is. Which then brings us to the next point. How much time do you have is what you really need to figure out. If you have 20 minutes for yourself, that's still okay. Don't think that you have to spend an hour or two hours on yourself. If you can, beautiful, that's amazing to spend more time on yourself. But you could even do a morning routine just in as short as 20 minutes. 15 minutes if you really, really wanted to. And so what you want to think about is is how much time do you actually have for yourself? Think about that. Is it 30 minutes? Is it an hour? And once you know how much time you have, then you can start to put these pieces in place that we're going to talk about right now. And what I always say is, is, as I said a few minutes ago, is make it as easy as possible. So if part of your morning routine is, you know, to work out, well then right next to your alarm clock, why not have your workout clothes right there? have them folded, have your shoes, have everything. So let's say if you you wake up, you go downstairs and then you go for a run and that's part of your morning routine. Why not have right next to your alarm, a t-shirt, some shorts, underwear, socks and shoes right there. So all you have to do is hit the alarm, put that on and then you've got no excuses because you're not going to go back to, hopefully you're not going to go back to bed with your running gear on and your running shoes. So have everything out for you to make it as easy as possible. If you want to journal every single morning, have your journal out. If you want to plan in the morning, have your planner out. Have everything that you need set up the night before so that when you wake up, you don't even have to think. You can just immediately go into it. Now, the most important thing to do as soon as you wake up in the morning is this though, is to drink water. If you wanna know what it, what's you know proven, I guess you could say, to be the best that really helps people the most is water with lemon and sea salt. Uh, it's, it balances the body's pH. It's more hydrating than normal water when you put salt and lemon in it. Um, and the average person loses about a pound of water every single night just from breathing. They lose a pound of water. So you're already waking up dehydrated. 
So the first thing you should do is to be able to do that. It also helps you there digest it. It helps with your boosting your immune system. People just don't drink enough water, period. So the most dehydrated that you usually are is as soon as you wake up in the morning. So the first thing you should do, go down, drink a glass of water. Now, the rest of these things I'm going to give you, all tips, you can pick and choose whatever you like. Uh, if, if the sun is already up, it has been proven that it actually helps the human wake up and stop producing melatonin if you go outside and look at the blue in the sky. Don't look at the sun, but look in the blue in the sky. This is the reason why, uh, you know, if you see people that wear at night, when they go watch TV or they're on their computer at night, they have blue light glasses, blue blockers, is because the blue that's actually in a screen or that's in lights actually tells your body to stay awake. And so when you wake up in the morning and you go look at the actual uh, sky, that blue that's in the sky actually tells your brain to stop making melatonin, which is what makes you fall asleep. And so you can have water, you can go outside, you can look at the blue inside of the sky. And a big tip that I'll give you, even though it's really hard to do, uh, that helps is don't have caffeine for an hour after waking up. Now, some of you guys are like, holy crap, I don't know if I could do that. Try it. Give it a shot. Uh, what they've actually found is that caffeine helps you more if you wait an hour until after your body's woken up, after you've started your digestion, after you've had your water, all of that stuff. Uh, another tip that I'll give you around coffee is if you're wanting to ever switch off of coffee, I used to drink a lot of coffee and everyone knew that I was obsessed with coffee. I don't really drink much coffee at all anymore. And the reason why is because I made the transition from coffee to yerba mate. Uh, I've made episodes on it in the past where I talk about it. Yerba mate is Y-E-R-B-A space M-A-T-E, yerba mate. And the reason why is because number one, when you have coffee, there's a huge spike and then it just immediately drops. You know, your energy can start to drop pretty quickly. That's why they say that there's the actual spike and then drop when you have coffee. Uh, and that can happen within, you know, 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And then you're like, oh, I need another cup of coffee. Yerba mate, there's a spike and then it slowly dies off over about three to five hours. So it actually stays in your system better. The other thing is that uh, it's actually, instead of dehydrating like coffee it is, it's actually hydrating for you. And uh, it's also considered one of the most nutritious plants that's on the planet. So you get the, oh, and you also have as much caffeine as a cup of coffee. So you have as much caffeine as a cup of coffee. Uh, it is more nutritious and there's no massive drop. And the thing that I always say is if you want to take my recipe, I always have yerba mate with stevia, with cinnamon, and with oat milk. And uh, I recommend it to everybody. It's just way better to drink in the morning. I recommend drinking tea versus drinking coffee. If you're ever wanting to make the switch, yerba mate is definitely the way to do it. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. Other things that you could do. Uh, if you've ever read the book, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, Hal's one of my friends, so I'll be able to you know, tell you guys the, the ways that you can take his book and put it into your life. He says this, I think of this acronym SAVERS, S-A-V-E-R-S, -E to put into your morning routine. So the book's called The Miracle Morning. I absolutely recommend it. S-A-V-E-R-S, -E the acronym. These are all different pieces that you can take and decide, do I want this in my morning routine? Do I like this? Do I not like this? Is this something that could benefit me? Or is this something I don't really need to worry about at this point? SAVERS, the first S stands for silence, which would be sitting in silence, meditating. You could just stare at the wall, stare at a view, whatever it is that you want to do, but sitting in silence and just allowing your subconscious to kind of come through. It's one of the reasons why people have the best ideas when they're driving or when they're inside of the shower is because their brain is not constantly being, you know, there's no one talking to them. There's no internet that they're scrolling through. There's no Facebook or Instagram. There's no music that they're listening to. So when you sit in silence, usually that's when you have your deepest thoughts and usually your best ideas come from that. So it could be silence that you're sitting in or it could be meditation. And you decide how long you want to do this for. It could be five minutes, it could be 10, it could be 20 minutes. The first S in the acronym SAVER stands for silence. Then you have A. A stands for affirmations. Affirmations are just words, positive affirmation, positive words that you say to yourself. They usually start with I am. I am blank. So usually what you're trying to do is you're trying to say to yourself, uh, there's three things that I say that, that you want to really 
make sure that you have in order to create a perfect affirmation. Number one is it needs to be present tense. Number two, it needs to be empowering. And number three, it needs to be true. And so an example of if you watch The Secret, if you've ever read the book, The Secret, it's beautiful and stuff, but it's a little bit too lofty for some people of sitting around and saying affirmations like uh, money is flowing to me abundantly from all areas of the universe, right? It's a little bit too much. Like for me, my BS meter goes, yeah, but I'm broke. Like if I was broke and I was sitting there going, oh, but money's flowing to me from all areas of the universe, I'd be like, that's BS. That's just a bunch of crap. So we're trying to take our conscious words and ingrain them into our subconscious. And so if it's true, if it's empowering, and if it's present tense, it helps. And so instead of saying money is flowing freely to me from all areas of the universe, you could say something like, I'm working hard every day to make more money. I'm working hard every single day to make $100,000 this year. Do you see the difference between those two affirmations? One of them seems a little bit too lofty for me personally, but the other one, I'm like, yeah, I am working harder every day to make that first $100,000. And it's also empowering where I'm like, hell yeah, I'm working towards making that $100,000. You know, if I'm sick or if I have some sort of, uh, you know, let, let's say I have some sort of issues, then I'm going to say, I am healthy. I am healthy. And I'm trying to program into my subconscious that I am healthy and tell my body to heal itself. And so affirmations is the second part of savers. So that's S A. V stands for visualization, waking up in the morning, closing your eyes, thinking about the future that you want, whether it's the house, the cars, the clothes, the business, the relationships, the traveling, whatever it is that you want, because everybody wants something different. What do you want your future to look like a year from today? What do you want it to look like five years from today? Can you sit down and can you visualize every single morning the perfect future that you want? because I'm not going to go too deep into visualization. There's a lot of proof of how neurologically it actually helps you bring that into your life. But you're also programming the subconscious when you visualize. You're sitting there and telling yourself, okay, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to get. And long story short, I'll tell you this, you actually basically trick your brain into believing it's possible because the only thing that's holding us back from creating the life that we want is ourselves. And so if you can trick your brain after months and months and months and months of visualization to not only believing it's possible, but knowing it's going to happen, you can work much harder and stop holding yourself back from what it is that you're trying to create. So the V stands for visualization. E stands for exercise. This could be running. This could be walking your dog. This could be yoga. This could be high intensity interval training. This could be weightlifting, whatever it is for you, some form of exercise. Is that something that you like? Is that something that you want to put into your morning routine? Think about it exercise. R stands for read. This is a perfect time to read. There's not usually anybody up. It's quiet. You can focus on the pages. Maybe you say, I'm going to read five pages every single morning. Great. You don't have to read for two hours. Maybe you say, I'm going to read 10 pages every single morning. If you say, I'm going to read 10 pages every single morning, you're going to get through about a book a month. Imagine how much different your life would be if you got through one more book every single month. If you went through 12 books over the next year, and there were books that would really impact your life. How much better would you be 365 days from today? So that's the R. And the last S stands for scribe, which means journaling, because you know the J wouldn't have made sense in savers. It wouldn't be saver J. That would make no sense. So savers, scribe, journaling, writing down, and in, in actually asking yourself questions and making yourself answer them. What is it that I want in my life? Where do I want to be 365 days from today? Uh, where am I going to find my perfect spouse? Where do I, what, do, what type of father do I want to be or mother do I want to be for my children? What type of husband or wife do I want to be? What type of brother, sister do I want to be? How do I want to take care of my parents? And why is it that I'm working so hard? What is my end goal? What is my why in life? What is it that makes me excited? What is my passion? You ask yourself these questions, the questions that you deeply want to know, and then force yourself to answer them. That's what journaling is. Most people think that journaling is sitting down and saying, dear diary, today I did this, 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 or today I'm going to do this, this, this. Journaling is not that. Journaling is at the simplest form, asking yourself a question, forcing yourself to answer it. So asking yourself the deep questions that you truly want to answer and then forcing yourself to answer it. So let me go over that one more time. Savers, silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, scribing, AKA journaling. A couple extra things that I will add in that would really help you out that I know I've recommended to a lot of people and I've, there's been lots of studies that help them as well uh, for this next one, even though it's hard, is taking a cold shower every single morning. I'm not gonna spend this podcast talking about how amazing a cold shower is for you. Just Google 
benefits of a cold shower, read through it. And if that doesn't sell you on it, I don't know what will. But you know, the one thing that I like most about a cold shower, besides all of the, the benefits of your body and your health and all of that, is the mental benefit of it. Nobody wants to take a cold shower. Cold showers are not fun. I don't enjoy them. But there's a little voice inside of your head that says, don't take that cold shower. Don't do it. Nobody will know if you don't take that cold shower. Take the warm shower. It feels so much better. That little voice is also the little voice that's holding you back from all of your hopes, dreams, desires, and the life that you want. So if you can wake up in the morning and conquer that little voice every single morning, by taking that cold shower, when you don't want to take that cold shower, you are building resilience of doing what it is that you don't want to do, but know you need to do to get to wherever it is that you want to get to. Because ultimately, if you want the life that you want, you're going to have to push yourself. You're going to, there's going to be roadblocks. There's going to be barriers. You're going to have to have mental fortitude to push through every single time those things pop up. And so for you, It'd be very important to start to, it's just like going to the mental gym. When you go to a gym and you lift weight, you lift heavier and heavier weight. So if you know that there's that little voice inside of your head that says you're stupid, you're ugly, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not going to be able to start a successful business. Why do you think that you're worth it? You're never going to make enough money. Whatever it is, that little voice in your head, that's whatever it says in your head, if you can wake up and force yourself to conquer that little voice every single morning with a cold shower, and then when the, you're in the cold shower and the little voice says, all right, you're done, get out. And you're like, screw you, I'm going to stay in for an extra minute. You are building the mental fortitude to push yourself past the point of what is comfortable and not listening to that little voice. So not only does it have incredible health benefits of cold showers, I actually love the mental benefit of the cold shower of doing what you don't want to do. So that's another thing that you could add to your morning routine. Another thing you could add to your morning routine is listening to a podcast. This is a pretty good one. I would recommend this one, but there's other great podcasts that you can listen to every single morning where there's people that are interviewed that are inspiring, that teach you. It's about growth. The, the morning routine is a time for growth, for you to focus on yourself and for you to grow. And then another thing that I recommend is this, plan your day, take 10 minutes, take five minutes, because a lot of people go into their day in reaction mode. They just go into the day and just things are happening and things are happening and things are happening and they're trying to put out fires. That's reaction mode. If you take 10 minutes and look at your day and start to plan it out and go into it proactively, you start to realize that you get a lot more done. You're much more productive throughout the day. You're much more efficient. And at the end of the day, you feel like you got a lot of stuff done compared to if you just go into the day and just try to figure it out. So I recommend that. And the importance of a morning routine more than anything else is for you to have you time, right? A lot of people that are listening to this, you have children, you have people that need you, you have people that are relying on you. Not often enough do you always get the you time that you need to to grow yourself, but you are the most important person in your life. Nobody else is more important in your life than you, but the better that you are, the better that you can serve everyone else around you, your children, your family, your spouse, your, everyone that's around you. The better that you are, the better that they are. If you don't work on yourself, then they're missing out as much as you're missing out from you not working on yourself. It's like they say, when the plane's going down, put the oxygen on yourself first and then put it on your kids. Because if you try to put it on your kids and you pass out and then the kids pass out, it doesn't help anybody. But when you put it on yourself, then you can help other people that are around you. This is the same equivalent of waking up earlier so that you can have you time, work on yourself. Because when you work on yourself, you make every other person around you's life better. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Inhale, reprogram who you are. Just have no expectations. Oh, there's a pretty good chance you might cry out of happiness. Now you might go, that makes no sense to me. Exhale.